Now, Parker, what's going on here? What are we looking at? So, uh, we are at Jeff Anderson's house. You can come through, Jeff. Come on in, Jeff. Look at yeah, that. Sure. He's got so salmon. This is, uh, uh, this is critical uh, part of the... <laughs> the fuel for the creativity. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Jeff's setup here. His, uh, yeah. His other, uh, his other work, other than his, his cooking. Yeah. Um, so, right now, what we're doing is we have two sorbent testers going. Mm -hmm. uh, Which ones are those? Here? This one and okay. this one. These are okay. two sorbent testers. This is the more advanced, more complicated one. This is a simplified version, but we decided the simplified version was good enough for our purposes. Okay. Um, inside of it, these blue sheets you see are uh, about 10 grams each of sorbent. That we got. And sorbent's the stuff that basically sucks up and releases the carbon. Yes. Right? It okay. the, the gotcha. CO2. Let me get a closer look there. Uh, just a sheet of paper there, essentially. And this yeah. is, is this one here? Oh, no, this is a folder. <laughs> it's more Easily mistaken. It's wow, bit... look at that. Literally like a piece of paper. Yeah, it's a All little right. thicker. It's more like a manila envelope. All right, got um, And so what we're testing for right now is we're using uh, distilled water okay. uh, in order to confirm that the chlorine in tap water wasn't what was causing our problems in terms of releasing the CO2. Okay. So, so far, and we thought that because there might be yeah stuff in there. Okay, got it. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So, the results that we're seeing right here okay show us that the release of co2 is not the levels that we are hoping to get mm -hmm. from the sorbent which leads us to believe that uh, it wasn't prepped before we received it so okay we have to do the next step for us is to try a couple different preparation processes ourselves see if that removes the chlorine that's been attached to the sorbent okay Once that chlorine's removed it vacates an area basically that will allow C the CO2 to bond with the uh, sorbent. Okay. So then we can start getting more of those results that we expect. Okay. Very, very cool. And this is all kind of, this is again, the kind of souped up sort of. Yeah, this is the fancier the one, fancier. but we are working on a much simpler one mm -hmm. like this one, or if this one over here, which is even a little bit simpler. Uh, that we're going to be documenting and putting online for people to make them on their own. So this is the DIY sorbent tester that would allow people all over the place to test the efficacy or effectiveness yeah. of, the, of the sorbent. And we'll That's fantastic. The code Obviously and pretty DIY. Three electronics. Yeah, there's a one hole drilled in here that has been sealed up with the hot glue. Mm -hmm. There's a sensor that's been sort of uh, attached to the top here. And then this sensor is just displaying the PPM. Okay, parts and, per million of carbon. Yeah. Okay. The CO2. Gotcha. And this one right here is the, the, this is the microcontroller, which is sort of the brains of the operation that is transmitting, the running and collecting the data from the mm -hmm. sensor, transmitting it to the display, and also putting it here where we can observe the numbers going up over time. Very cool. And this is not a beverage for our purposes, right? We're actually using yeah. the seltzer? This is what we're using to calibrate the sensor to make sure that we are seeing the release of CO2 that we'd expect that the sensor is accurately releasing, releasing reading <laughs> the co2 uh that has been released inside the container so we use one tablespoon of uh of club soda and then we know what the concentration of co2 is in uh the average club soda and then we can look at the parts per million for that size of container we have and determine whether or not our sensor is accurately uh, showing how much co2 has been released inside that container and once we know that and we know that our whole system is working correctly, then we can start using it on other chemicals to make sure that uh, they are releasing the amount of CO2 and measure the amount of CO2 that they are able to capture and release. Cool. And just last thing here, this guy here is super exciting. Um, uh, when do we think this might be available for the public? And what do we think the, the range of cost might be for that? It looks pretty... Soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is, we have significantly uh, simplified it to make awesome. it more accessible to people. We've taken pictures of a lot of the work we've done today. Uh, so we're going to be putting that up on our GitHub pretty soon. Uh, and the cost of this is going to be, let me do some math in my head. I think it'll be less than $100 Fantastic. with shipping. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.